So Bill Nye the Science Guy has decided to make a video on TikTok talking to young people about the importance of wearing masks. So let's take a look at that, then we'll be back to talk about it. Greetings everyone, Bill Nye here. Why do people in the scientific community want you to wear a face mask when you're out in public? Well, please consider the following. Face masks, like this one, prevent particles from my respiratory system from getting into the air and then into your respiratory system. Blocking the movement of air is an old trick. Here's a scarf. It blocks the movement of air around my throat. Helps keep me warm. It can block the movement of air, but only to a certain extent. Here's an N95. These are made to block particles in the medical environment and when you're out mowing the lawn. This one's not sterilized, but it's pretty effective. <laughs> so the reason we want you to wear a mask is to protect you, sure. But the main reason we want you to wear a mask is to protect me from you and the particles from your respiratory system from getting into my respiratory system. Everybody, this is a matter literally of life and death. And when I use the word literally, I mean Literally, a matter of life and death. So when you're out in public, please wear a mask. Thank you for joining me on Consider the Following. So you just saw there Bill Nye the Science Guy actively demonstrating to us just how effective masks are. Showing you that, you know, when he has the mask on very visually, I thought it was so creative, very, very brilliant there. Actively demonstrating that when he has the mask on, he can't blow out the candle, right? Like it's just, it doesn't, he can't do it because it's so darn effective at blocking air. Nonetheless though, I do want to respond to one thing that a number of sort of mask skeptics I saw in the comment section were arguing about, uh, you know, in this video. They were, they were arguing that actually Bill Nye the science guy disproves himself in that video. They argued that, you know, because of the fact that we saw the candle flicker at all, it meant that actually this demonstration actually proved that masks are entirely ineffective. To make this argument, they point out just how small the virus is and that in fact the virus is smaller than the little slits within a mask. And so because of the fact that the candle was flickering at all, it was in fact, this video in fact demonstrated and in, and in their minds seemed to prove the fact that the masks are ineffective and that they don't work. So, you know, look, I don't want to just immediately laugh at someone who, you know, has objections or has questions or has concerns. So let's research this question and let's see if we can figure out why maybe, you know, why medical experts who have researched this don't seem to see the same problem that they see. So this is on the CDC website. You can see here on frequently asked questions and it is about coronavirus. So let's take a look at how the coronavirus is spread and see if we can figure out what the hole in that sort of objection in the reasoning for that objection is. So let's take a look here. The virus that causes COVID-19 is thought to spread mainly from person to pe person, mainly through respiratory droplets produced when an affected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. These droplets can land in the mouth and noses of people who are nearby, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. Basically, it's not spread sort of through the, you know, like the, the vacuum of space, right? That it's just, you know, um, these viruses are just shooting out every time someone's talking, every time, et cetera, et cetera. It's, you know, it's going in through the um, droplets and the various kind of humid air which is produced as we breathe, and that these very small droplets, oftentimes microscopic droplets still, um, are what the virus attaches to and obviously as we know though the thing is that these droplets even though the droplets are also very very small the droplets are bigger and are absorbed when it is going out. So it's not the case that, you know, the virus is just, you know, sort of, you know, just shooting out like little bullets through, <laughs> you know, every single time we talk. It's that the virus is, you know, stuck on these tiny little droplets that oftentimes we can't see, sometimes we can see, um, but, you know, they're just stuck on to uh, those droplets and those things are getting shot out and the mask is able to stop those Things. So that's why this video is so effective and is so good at demonstrating it. Now, I do just want to talk about the importance of Bill Nye the Science Guy specifically doing this, right? Because guys, Bill Nye has so much respect among people my age group and younger and even a little bit older. I mean, pretty much anyone from like age like 34, 33, 35-ish, all the way down to like, 
you know, late teens, et cetera, et cetera. Like we all know Bill Nye the Science Guy because we all watched his videos in the classroom. In fact, oftentimes w those days when we were watching Bill Nye the Science Guy, those were some of the best days in class because, you know, sometimes the teacher would let us eat snack while we watched Bill Nye and it was, you know, super chill day. It was absolutely great. You know, we all love Bill Nye the Science Guy and he does have, I think, like a, a kind of air of authority among people, uh, you know, of my age group and, you know, again, a little bit older, a little bit younger because, again, you know, we all watched him and we all understood him and, you know, we respect him as the science guy, right? Like even now, like when I say Bill Nye, like I say Bill Nye the science guy almost every single time because I can't get that, you know, little tune out of my head. He's Bill Nye the science guy, right? Like I, I can't get that out of my head. That's how I think of Bill Nye. He's the science guy because, I mean, the branding was just so effective and we saw it so many times growing up as a kid. So I do think this is important. I do think it is important. And especially going to Bill Nye's point there at the end, that it's not necessarily about protecting you, the mask wearer, it's about protecting other people from those, you know, those viruses attached, attached onto little droplets shooting out like other bullets at, uh, uh, at other people. It's to protect other people who may be immunodeficient, may be elderly, or in some kind of vulnerable population and so it's about protecting other people, and that's why we wear the mask. And so that's why it's so important for this, for this video to go out on TikTok. Right, because TikTok obviously is for younger people. It's for people in Gen Z. It's for people, you know, my age and even maybe a little bit younger than me. And so, you know, it is something for younger people to be aware of because there's a lot of young people who don't necessarily want to wear a mask, right? Because even though they may agree with all the science, for instance, they may think, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not in a vulnerable population. So I'm just gonna take the risk and not wear a mask. And Bill Nye here explaining so clearly and so simply, and again, very visually and so creatively just why it is so important for even people who may see themselves as very healthy, may not see themselves at a sort of risk factor that, oh, they should be wearing a mask too. So this is a really good thing to see Bill Nye actively and clearly demonstrating. And, you know, I want to point something out because this is a misconception which a lot of people have. In fact, actually, I was at the gym the other day. They just reopened the gyms and some guy was coming up to me to sort of just complain about the fact that, um, you know, it didn't look like a ton of people were at the gym. They were saying he was like, oh, well, nobody's at the gym anymore because, you know, the capacity is lower. And so as a result, more people are going to die because, you know, th th they ended up getting off their exercise routine and are going to get obesity and get fat and die early than are going to die from coronavirus. Now, I don't agree with that. But, you know, my point here is this, right? This is a misconception that a lot of people have. The reason why we wear masks, the concern about opening up the gyms and, you know, too early, et cetera, Etc. wasn't necessarily about young people or you know old people. It, what it was about was that young people might go out and go to the bars, go to the gym, and get sick, and then spread it to other vulnerable populations. And that's the concern that everybody had from the beginning. And also, the other thing to point out here is this particular person who was trying to talk to me, who, by the way, wasn't wearing a mask, um, <laughs> you know, coming up to my face and talking to me not wearing a mask, uh, you know, he was also pointing out how, you know, the death rate is just so low, that this virus isn't at all dangerous, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the things that's really important to always keep in mind when we talk about things is that the death rate is not a fixed number. There's this idea that's sort of just glued into a lot of people's mind that the death rate is this percentage, this number. But actually, the death rate is a social phenomena. The death rate is a social question. If too many people get sick and hospitals are overloaded, then the death rate goes up. If too many people are afraid to go to their doctor because they're afraid of high medical bills and so they wait and wait and wait to go to the, go to the doctor and then when they show up, they're already really sick, then the death rate goes up. If we live in a society which doesn't have clear access to clean and healthy foods, and as a result there's more obesity, then the death rate goes up. If we live in an area of the country which doesn't have access to, you know, uh, clear and effective access to gyms, and so as a result the population in that community has a higher obesity rate, then the death rate goes up. And so, you know, when we talk about, for instance, racial, racial gaps when it comes to the virus and how the virus is disproportionately harming minorities or low-income individuals, you know, a lot of people get confused. I've seen some people both online and even one person in person, um, you know, basically saying that this must be fake news because the virus doesn't see race, right? The virus doesn't see color. And so how could it be that one person is more likely to get, get uh, you know, die from the virus because they're black as opposed to white? This doesn't make any sense. So they say that it's fake 
fake news and that, you know, this is part of like the left wing conspiracy to push a racial narrative on everybody. Guys, that's not what it's about. It may be like, sure, yeah, the virus itself doesn't see race, but society does. In fact, I want to show you some numbers here because I think this is so important for us to look at and for us to think about here. Let me make this a little bit bigger here so you can see white here in the blue, black in the orange, and then Latino and Hispanic. And you can see just how dramatic and extreme the racial gap is when it comes to the coronavirus death. So of among 85 and older, and this is per capita rates per 1,000 people and uh, you know who get coronavirus. So you can see here black people being way, way, way more likely to die from coronavirus at basically every single age group. In fact, yes, at every single age group, black people are much, much more likely to die from coronavirus. Again, it's not because the virus itself is like, oh, that's a black person, I'm gonna be more aggressive to the black person. It's because of the social factors and because of our racist economy that we've set up, which makes it so the virus can disproportionately harm people. So when people say, oh, well, the death rate is some immutable number, that's not right. The death rate can be controlled and confined by the way in which we've structured society. Everything, everything is in question when we talk about the death rate for a particular virus, including, again, food regulation. Do we have effective access to healthy foods at reasonable prices so that low-income people don't feel like they have to always eat unhealthily? Right? Do people have clear and all consistent access to gyms so that then they can go to the gym and maybe get a habit out of it and work out and stay healthy and stay fit so that they're less they're more able to fight off coronavirus when they get it? These social factors, in fact, do significantly and directly affect the death rate and the morbidity. Again, again, I've said it a million times already now. The death rate is not an immutable factor. If hospitals start getting overloaded because what we've done is reopened everything too quickly, people aren't willing to wear masks, and so hospitals hospitals get overloaded, then the death rate is going to go back up. We've managed to keep the death rate relatively low, and fortunately, overall, it doesn't seem like the virus is as deadly as we may have initially thought, as initial reports seem to, seem to suggest, even though the virus, as we now seem to think, is massively, incredibly, super, super, super contagious. And so it is very, very important for us to understand these facts when we go in and when we discuss this virus, right? And again, Bill Nye the Science Guy clearly and visually debunking so many of these myths for us is so good and so important for us to see because again, you know, there's so many myths floating around. There's a lot of questions that people have and I don't think the proper response from us, you know, whether you're on the left or wherever you are on the political spectrum is just to laugh at people, just to say that they're stupid because you know what, then someone might run around and say, well, you said I was stupid because I had a question about this. Well, I'm definitely not wearing a mask now. We're trying to get as many people as possible to wear masks so that we can save lives. So, you know, I, I do think it's really important to be educational when we talk about these things. It's really, really important to do that. And I struggle with that. I'm not saying I'm perfect, man, but we've got to try. We've got to try to, you know, be as, you know, engaged in dialogue when it comes to this. All right, you guys, that's the video. If you liked it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks.